Welcome to the 39th episode of Season Tickets. I'm Michael. And I'm Max. The Fairview Boys basketball team beat Brooklyn, and JV is now 8-1 and one while varsity improves to 4-6. and six. The girls basketball team beat Black River 48-40. to 40. And Tommy Pallison and, and Alan Tin both won their weight class in their meet on Saturday. And now we go into our recap of the only top 25 basketball game of the weekend, and that was Villanova versus Butler. And Villanova did get the victory 60-55 to 55 in a game we both got right. And how about those NFL playoffs? First game we saw that maybe Brian Orver, Hoyer leading, leaving wasn't the worst thing for the Browns as they had five turnovers. And then we both saw a game that was just crazy between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers. These two teams hate each other, flat out hate each other. <laughs> and you knew it was going to be physical. Throughout the years, these teams have had countless injuries that – have been just on dirty plays, and it's been crazy the past couple seasons. So everybody knew it was going to be a high-stakes game. Even the officials were standing at midfield to make sure nobody crossed their lines before the game. So that was kind of funny. And it started off pretty good for the Steelers. They get up 15-0 entering the fourth quarter, and it was just it was a really solid football game to watch, to be honest. Even though there was yeah. only 15 points entering the fourth quarter, it was one of the better games I've seen all year. And then the madness started to happen. Ryan Shazier hit Giovanni Bernard. I think it should have been a 15-yard penalty. Instead, no penalty is called. Shazier recovers the fumble, and the Steelers get the ball back. That was kind of a turning point in the game. Bernard with, got hurt on that too, right? Yeah, he blacked out. I, I, I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't really see anything until kind of the, to the middle of the fourth quarter. I was, it was not by a TV. I, I'm not going to say he did black out, but it appeared like he blacked out oh, on the play. He probably did. He probably did. Yeah. So that happened. I definitely think that should have been called a penalty. And that kind of riled up Vontez Burfecht. And when Vontez Burfecht gets riled up, bad stuff happens to who's Oh, yeah. I mean, you, let's remember when this guy was coming out of Arizona State, he was, people thought he was worthy of a first round pick. I mean, he was that good. But then he went undrafted due to all his issues on the field when he gets riled up and I mean you I want, saw what was it this year or last year where he like had a pick or a fumble and knocked over the NFL camera just <laughs> went right up to it and smacked it over I yeah mean, he's, he's a crazy he's man a nut. and Pac-Man Jones too let's not forget his start to his NFL career hey he's turned his life around pretty well yeah, but I'll give him that but let's not forget I mean it's probably still <laughs> down inside and we'll get to that in a little bit but, yeah, I wanted the Browns to draft Fontes perfect, actually. Oh, yeah. I was kind of right about that, but not going to say anything about the Browns drafting. That's a topic for another day. But we do go back to the Bengals game, and the Bengals did get the ball back. They score a touchdown. Jeremy Hill, they drive down the field with A.J. McCarron. Jeremy Hill scores a touchdown. They get the ball back, kick a field goal. I wasn't sure if it was the right call at that situation because you're giving the ball back to the Steelers with three minutes to go, or maybe it was four minutes to go, but not a ton of time left. Well, so I mean, you gotta remember that Ben Roethlisberger was banged up. Yeah, and it did prove to be the correct call because they did get the ball back after about like forty seconds, maybe a bit more than that. So the Bengals do have the ball back down five, and that's when AJ McCarron hit AJ Green for what, like a thirty-yard touchdown, yeah. and that did give the Bengals the lead. As who's the safety for Pittsburgh that totally blew that coverage on that play? Was it Mike Mitchell? Yep, Mike Mitchell, the guy who's known for his big hits, and every Bengals fan claims he's the worst safety in the league, <laughs> and he kind of proved it on that play because he was guarding five yards into the end zone when his guy was five yards before the end zone, and AJ Green does score the touchdown to give the Bengals the lead, and then the Bengals drew up. In my opinion, which was the worst two-point conversion play I've ever seen in my life, and well, then I, mean, I don't know. I think the I think Notre Dame running the ball against Clemson was a pretty bad one. Ooh, that's up there. That's definitely up there for one of the worst ones. <laughs> but then the madness just started. Max, what happened on the Steelers' next drive when they were down one? So Landry Jones comes in and throws a pick to Vontaze Perfect, who. You know, rolls over and is da and is rolled down, but the guy continues to run all the way to the locker room, followed by none other than Pac-Man Jones. I mean, you see like Ray Maluga and Iloka in there, but I mean, it, it's kind of funny. Like there was a vine on tour, the, them just just casually running to the locker room when you hear all the pounding on the stands. 
<laughs> but, you know, that kind of started the whole Vontez Burfick Pac-Man Jones episode. <laughs> and, and so, you know, it's not a pick. It, well, it's a pick, but it's not a touchdown. As you know, he, as the NFL, if you, you, know, you land with it, you can get back up and run. But I think he was, he was touched, touched by, was I touched, think it was yeah. Marcus Wheaton, don't mm-hmm. you remember. And then, you know, Cincinnati gets the ball back. Can run out the clock, and Jeremy Hill freaking fumbles. They can't run out the clock. They needed one, maybe yeah. two first downs. Pittsburgh still had all three of their timeouts. And they had with a minute field forty to go too. Like you could even score if you really wanted to. Yeah, they were at like the twenty-five yard line, uh, or thirty yard yeah. line. And Jeremy Hill fumbles the first play. Well, I think. I don't know what the Bengals should have done in that situation because well, you know no, Jeremy mean, Hill has the fumble problem. That's his like fourth or fifth on the season. Yeah, but you I can't mean, put in Bernard in that situation, and there's no way you put in a third, uh, third string running back in that situation. So with the Hill fumble, it was a bad way to potentially lose the game, but it didn't look like they were going to lose the game. And then here comes Ben Roethlisberger running out. It's like it's like Paul Pierce in the NBA Finals when <laughs> Paul Pierce got. Carried out of the dang Boston TD Garden, whatever arena, and he comes running back out in the fourth quarter. And I, you know, I remember watching it as a little kid. I was like, "What on earth?" <laughs> I thought he died. But here comes Ben Roethlisberger, bad shoulder and all. They basically throw screen passes all the way down the field, and then you know they get to a certain point, and then that's when they try a downfield pass. Kind of, it was like 10, 15 yards. Antonio Brown goes up for it, misses it. Here comes Vontez Perfect, lowering the shoulder right in the Antonio Brown's helmet. That gets flagged because I mean it was it was as late as you could get almost. I mean it was just it was just stupid by Perfect. You didn't even catch the ball. Like Vontez Perfect legit went after Antonio Brown after the ball was dropped. Like how dumb are you? You're about ready to be the hero. I mean you tear up the Steelers all night and then you get. What seems to be the game ceiling pick, and you do that. So Antonio Brown is just knocked out, laying on the ground, and you know, they're all standing around. And here comes Joey Porter, you know, a former Steeler linebacker. I used to hate him being a Browns fan. And, you know, he comes out on the field. I remember he was always, you know, ah, mouthy, mouthy, all that. I mean, which I have no problem with. I think it's hilarious, and I think it's fun to watch. But, you know, to a point, you know, you're just like, shut up, dude. But. Here he comes onto the field, and he starts chirping at the Bengals players. He starts yelling at Vontez Perfect, you know, starts a little huddle around them. You know, like you're a coach. You shouldn't, he shouldn't have even been on the field in the first place. They should have had someone else helping off, like the offensive lineman. And, you know, well, here he goes, opening his mouth. They don't call a penalty on him. Here comes Pac-Man Jones. And, and you know, Pac-Man Jones, like Mike said, has turned around. But Pac-Man Jones still kind of has that idiot in him. <laughs> And he, and he comes up, says stuff to Joey Porter, shoves him. That's another penalty. And the Steelers kick the game-winning field goal. What I have a problem with, Pac-Man Jones gets flagged, Yeah. doesn't get fined. Joey Porter doesn't get flagged, gets fined. Well, I think, I think Pac-Man Jones is going to get fined soon after that post-game Instagram video. I mean, that's on, like, Snoop Dogg level when Snoop Dogg gets pretty angry at, like, Donald Stern, or no, Donald Sterling, the freaking Clippers o- owner, and what's the other guy? Uh, and, like, when the Steelers, did, or uh, I forget who the Steelers were playing, and they gave up a ton of points or something. It was against yeah. the Ravens game yeah, when he like, just went on a rant after that. Yeah, because he lost his fantasy <laughs> football league title. I mean, Snoop Dogg is that funny. And then, and then, um, and then he did the Rex Ryan thing because the Bills beat the Jets to get the Steelers in the playoffs. Yeah. And he, Snoop Dogg has some hilarious Instagram videos oh, the guy after the Steelers game. The guy games. does not care. I mean, he, it's, it's <laughs> hilarious. I love how he said Pittsburgh Steelers. He's like, we go into the playoffs, Pittsburgh Steelers go all the way. It's just <laughs> so funny. But the Steelers do advance. I kind of I do have a problem with Joey Porter advancing to the next round of the playoffs and getting like a $20,000 fine while Adam Pacman Jones is getting a 15-yard penalty and still has 20000 in his pocket. But that's just my opinion on what happened at the end of that game, which was kind of crazy. The perfect hit, if anybody tries to defend that guy, I was rooting for the Bengals. If anybody I thinks, was too. I hate the series. If, I don't like the Bengals, but I mean, it's at least an Ohio team. 
If anybody thinks that perfect hit wasn't a penalty, you're crazy. That perfect hit, I, I've seen fans try to say that that perfect hit wasn't a penalty. So, you know. No, you're, you're, you're just wrong. If, if that's college football, he's ejected. Mm-hmm. So is Ryan Chazier, though. Well, yeah. Ryan Chazier was a and beast. Then, perfect has such a bad reputation. When he sacked Big Ben, didn't go for the legs, didn't go up top, they reviewed the play, and the announcers were like, do you think this is a, uh, an illegal tackle, helmet to helmet? It wasn't even close, but since Montez Perfect did it, they reviewed it and got all antsy with each other because Montez Perfect sacked Big Ben, and Big Ben got hurt on a clean tackle. But that might have not even been, well, it, might've, it probably was the craziest thing that happened in the NFL playoffs. Yeah. But well, something crazier almost happened in the Vikings Seahawks game. So we got like negative two degrees, negative 20 wind chill. Crazy scenes in Minnesota. Third, third crazy, the third coldest playoff or NFL game ever. And I mean, like, there was a video on Twitter, you know, it was that cold where the guy, the guy had like a beer, starts to drink it, and it's legit a slushy like you could get at Circle K or Speedway. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was crazy. I saw that video too. But the Vikings are up 9 nothing, and then you knew the Seahawks would make a comeback. You knew they wouldn't be held scoreless for the whole game. And the Seahawks do end up making their comeback. They're up 10-9, and then the Seahawks do have to punt with, I want to say, like a minute 50 left in the game. So the Vikings have the ball down one. They need a field goal to win the game. Max, what happened on their final drive? Adrian Peterson fumbled. Let's not forget about that, which, you know, Adrian Peterson is probably the best running back right now in the NFL. I mean, he's 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 led the league in rushing a lot, like four times. I mean, he's a dog, but, you know, he does have these fumble issues. And he fumbles. Vikings eventually get the ball back due to some great defense, some huge stops. Drive all the way down the field. Adrian Peterson gets the ball, and, you know, they – I mean, they're – you tell they're skeptical because Matt Asiata is playing. Does anybody know who Matt Asiata is? No. But, like, <laughs> you know, like Adrian Peterson holds on. 27-yard field goal. It's legit an NFL extra point. Blair Walsh comes in. Blair Walsh is one of the better kickers in the NFL. I mean, the, kid, uh, the kid's what? He was, like, he was 33 of 34 going into this kick. And he also hit three field goals earlier in those conditions. Let's not forget about that. And it goes wide left. Laces out. Yes. I mean, the e- it's one of the easier kicks. I mean, like, that's like an extra point. And he missed it. I could, I could not believe it. I was, in, I was out on a college visit. I'm in the car back, and I'm with my dad, a Vikings fan. We're, and, you know, I'm kind of thankful we're on some icy roads in the middle of nowhere or else, you know, something else, something would have – Happened. I mean, and going back, you know, a few years, the Vikings went like 15 and one or like 14 and two in the regular season. They're in the NFC title game. Gary Anderson doesn't miss a kick all year. He's in a dome. He's in a dome. Against Let's, Atlanta, a, right? Yeah, a dome. No weather at all. Blair Walsh. I mean, the dude was playing in negative degree weather. And well, first of all, Blair Walsh is out there. He's the first kicker I've ever seen not wear sleeves when it's below, like, 40 degrees. I mean, what on earth? I was, it like, you know, it was so cold that some of the linemen were wearing sleeves. <laughs> linemen never wear sleeves. And here's Blair Walsh, who's probably, like, 5'10", 170 pounds out there. I mean, it was pretty funny. I would have wore, like, but a like, winter coat if I was a kicker. Yeah, Gary Anderson misses the field goal, and the Vikings don't get to go to the Super Bowl in, like, their best f- season in the franchise's history. I mean, the Vikings have some bad luck with kickers in big situations. And, I mean, even let's not forget a few years back when Brett Favre is rolling out. You know, they're about to, they're about to win against the Saints, go to the Super Bowl again. And Brett Favre has, you know, all this running room to get a first down. I mean, it was like three, four yards he had to get. And I mean, for a 40-year-old man, that's not, a, that's not a whole lot. Brett Favre throws it across his body over the middle and gets picked off. I mean... My goodness, the Vikings have some bad luck in the playoffs, like the Bengals and like the Browns would if they ever even make it. I don't think the Browns have bad luck in the playoff. You can't have bad luck if you don't make it. Well, I mean, 
I mean, let's let's go back when Red Right eighty eight, the drive, the fumble, were like our age, and you know they had to deal with all those tragedies in the playoffs. I mean, hey. the Browns are just the unluckiest franchise in sports. I mean, think about it. we get the number two pick this year, and there's not a quarterback worthy of drafting in the top ten. Hey, maybe Red Right eighty eight wasn't such a bad call after seeing that Blair Walsh kick. Well, <laughs> you know, and. Going on, the Packers ended up beating the Redskins. To my surprise a little bit, I mean, I did think that they were going to win, but, you know, I was kind of 50-50 on the game. But, you know, they came out, started bad after going down oddly 11 to nothing. I mean, you got safety and all this other stuff. A missed extra point. Yeah, and a, and a field goal. So, I mean, but they came back. Uh, they ended the game on, what, like a 35-7 to run? Mm-hmm. I mean – you know, it can't get much better than that. Once the offensive line started playing better, that's when Aaron Rodgers, you know, goes back to being Aaron Rodgers. And now we are going into our recap of the college football playoff national championship game. And Alabama beat Clemson in a game for the ages. It was a fantastic game back and forth throughout the night. But one of the key plays that changed the game was an onside kick that was oh, recovered yeah. by Alabama. And I feel like that really changed the momentum of the mm-hmm. game right there. And also Deshaun Watson did have a fantastic night for Clemson at offense, scoring 40 points against a very solid Alabama defense. But Unfortunately, it was too little for the Tigers as they do fall short of becoming what I do believe, which would have been the first 15-win team in college football history. So It was we'll looking s- good for me earlier to keep my uh, undefeated college football playoff streak going. Yeah, but we'll see if any team can do that next year and get the 15 wins. But now we are going into previews of the two big college basketball games going on on Tuesday. And West Virginia takes on Kansas and have a huge Big 12 showdown. Max, who do you have? I'm going to go with Kansas in this one. I mean, as you saw them play against Oklahoma, they, they come out to play in big games. And uh, I don't think West Virginia is quite there yet. And, uh, I mean, shout out to Issa Ahmad. I mean, you know, I love the Ohio kids. But uh, I do. I think Kansas is a little bit too strong for uh, West Virginia in this one. I'm going to take Kansas as well. I think that the really solid and experienced guard play will be the difference. We all know West Virginia does like to press, and I think that the experienced guards of Kansas will be able to handle the pressure with keeping care of the basketball and not turning the ball over, so I think they get the victory. And the next game we are going to be previewing is the Miami versus Virginia game. Max, who do you have? I'm going to go Virginia in this one. I think they're going to bounce back. They've lost two straight to teams like Georgia Tech that they probably shouldn't have lost to. And uh, I do have a feeling Miami could be one of those teams that early on he has a really good record because of, you know, the level they've played at, like Northwestern and South Carolina. But it'll be a, it'll be a, a big test for the Hurricanes to prove if they're for real or not. I'm actually going to take Miami in this game. I feel like Virginia's slumping a little bit at the wrong time right now, and I think the Hurricanes do have enough talent to maintain around where their spot is at the rankings. I believe they are eight right now. So I do think they get the victory in this game and remain in the top ten, and that will wrap it up for this episode of Season Tickets, the penultimate episode of Season Tickets. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe for one last episode of Season Tickets and other content on the channel.